Uh, hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? Okay, perfect. Okay, so it's great to be gathered here today, and I'm going to talk you through the mechanics of launching an NFT collection. An NFT can be any dig digital asset, an image, a text file, a piece of music, anything really, even a tweet or a Facebook post. Over the last 12 months, we've seen one early use case of NFTs, digital collectibles, like CryptoPunks and Bored Apes. I will talk you through the steps required to create an NFT collection consisting of 10,000 digital collectibles. Before you start your collection, you need to pick your identity and style. This is largely dependent on what resources you have at hand. I first entered this space as a programmer, not an artist. When I launched Weed Wells, I had to pick a style that I could deliver easily. The style behind my collection came about for the following reasons. Pixel art was a style I could teach myself to a fairly high standard as there were many tutorials on YouTube. I picked the whale as there were lots of online tutorials on how to draw a pixel whale. A whale in crypto is also known as someone who owns a thousand bitcoins. Therefore, it has natural connection to the crypto space. I also decorated the whales using traits from CryptoPunks, a collection at the time that was selling for millions. As you can see on screen, both the whale and the punk are wearing the same head accessories. The style and story resonated with NFT collectors. The collection cost $300 to build and so far has traded around $5 million. After you have selected your theme, you need to start creating all the base layers and traits that will make up your collection. This step actually took me several weeks as I was doing this after school. I used a free online pixel art website to create my images. I had to create all the base images and traits individually. It's a very laborious task. As you will see on screen, I created the whale in four different formats, alien, ape, zombie, and normal. Each one would have a different rarity with the alien whale being the rarest. I then created around 40 different traits. This included head accessories, eye accessories, and mouth accessories, such as pipes and cigarettes. After you have generated all your base images and traits, you then need to automatically generate the collection. You obviously can't create 10,000 images manually. Luckily, the code required to generate the collection is widely available online. If you take the base images and trait layers that you saw on the previous page and feed them through the generation script, you will get an automatically generated collection of several thousand images. These are the NFTs that will form your collection. When I first started generating my whales, I could see them hatching on screen. I knew immediately that something magical was unfolding. The images on their own do not hold much value. They need to be deployed to the blockchain, a distributed and decentralized ledger. Think of the blockchain as a huge Excel spreadsheet distributed across lots of different computers. It cannot be hacked or manipulated, and it records the ownership details and transaction details of each asset. This is what makes NFTs so powerful. A bunch of images that we created locally are now tradable and available on a, on a global scale. I deployed my NFTs to the Ethereum blockchain. Other common ones include Solana and Flow. Bitcoin is also a blockchain. However, it does not handle NFTs. It is designed with one sole purpose in mind, to act as a store of value similar to gold and eventually as a payments currency that will replace the dollar. Once you've deployed your NFT contract to a blockchain, they are available to be minted. Minting is a process by which an individual first purchases your NFT. At this stage, you will need a solid marketing strategy in order to grab attention. I was 12 when I launched Weird Wells, the youngest person in the world to launch a generative art NFT collection at the time. The story got picked up on Twitter and then went viral in the international press. The collection sold out in a few hours. Many successful NFT collections also have roadmaps, 
promising to bring utility to the collection. This could include future token drops, merchandise, gaming, and real life events. For example, at NFT NYC, Bored Ape holders were invited to an exclusive performance by Eminem and Snoop Dogg. Once your collection has been minted, it becomes available on all the NFT marketplaces. OpenSea is the most popular one. You can simply log into OpenSea using the same wallet address that you use to deploy the assets to the blockchain and claim the collection. Here is where you set up any royalties for any secondary sales. The interesting thing about this model is that OpenSea does not own the collection data. The collection is deployed to the blockchain and OpenSea just acts as a lightweight UI and reads the data. This is a fundamental difference between Web3 and Web2. In Web2, our data is owned by the platforms, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. And when we leave those platforms, we lose our data. However, in Web3, I can easily switch to another marketplace and still access my NFT collection data. This prevents creators from being locked in to a specific service provider. It's a revolutionary new model for protecting our digital property rights. To summarize, we've just had a quick overview of how to create an NFT collection, automatically generate the images, deploy it to a blockchain, and make it tradable on secondary markets. The crypto and NFT world is actually really hard for people to get started. There are only about 250,000 people in the NFT space right now with active wallets. Compare that to 20 million traders using Robinhood or the hundreds of millions of Marvel and Disney fans. It is so early. NFTs are all about digital art at the moment, but there's so many more applications outside art. I can envisage a world where everything from passports, cinema tickets to degree certificates will transition to NFT rails. 95% of applications for NFTs are still waiting to be discovered. I think that's really exciting. Thank you everyone um, for listening to my talk today and please do keep in contact. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. My user handles are on the screen. On Twitter, I mainly focus on educational content and share everything I learn as I continue to venture further down this rabbit hole. Thank you.